few weeks ago, President Obama spoke to the country and he laid out his vision to strengthen our economy, bolster the middle class, and restore the link between hard work and opportunity. We know that vision depends on a safe environment and a stable climate. That public health is critical to a strong economy. And we at EPA have an impressive record to back it up. Since our founding, we've cut air pollution 70%, and we've made huge progress cleaning up our waterways, redeveloping brownfield sites, holding polluters accountable, making chemicals safer, and much more. And meanwhile, our economy has tripled during that same time. You know, we know investments in environmental protection pay off, and that's why President Obama proposed an $8.6 billion budget for EPA in 2016. That's half a billion dollars above last year's levels. And that's why I can tell you that the state of our agency is strong. The simple fact is our success is all because of your hard work every day. You're keeping our air and our water clean. You're keeping our families and our communities healthy. Your scientific research is helping us identify and meet new challenges. And in every region and in every office, you're working to make sure EPA carries out its mission. You're the key to our success, each and every one of you. And I'm excited about what the coming year has to offer. So I wanted to share a few thoughts on the highlights of the agency's work from the past year, the progress we've made, and what lies ahead. Climate change is one of the most significant public health and economic challenges of our time. The president has asked EPA to take action, and that's just what we're doing. So this year, we're gonna look forward to finalizing our clean power plan that will significantly reduce carbon pollution from the country's largest sources. We're going to begin to regulate methane, a potent greenhouse gas, from the oil and gas sector. And we're going to look at moving forward another round of reductions of carbon pollution in our uh, heavy duty vehicles. Now we're also going to not forget that traditional air pollution is important here as well. We are reconsidering the ozone standard. That final rule is going to get done this year. First and foremost, we're gonna get our clean water rule finalized this year. But more importantly, we're gonna keep our emphasis on green infrastructure, on integrated planning. And we're gonna take a look at how best to spend our SRF dollars. We know we need uh, work done, but we also have creative ways of financing that work, which is why we launched our Water Infrastructure Finance Center. We're going to get that up and running and we're going to help communities deal with their water and wastewater challenges as effectively and efficiently as we can. EPA has been making a visible difference in communities throughout its history, but I really want to double down on that effort. We have been working with environmental justice communities. We have been working with tribes. We're working to clean up contaminated sites and to respond to spills and other emergencies. And we have been working on issues like climate resilience that are so important to the core mission of this agency. We have identified 51 communities where we are going to focus attention so that that work is not just visible to those communities, but visible to everyone about what EPA can and has been delivering. Our laws are great, but in order to deliver the benefits of those laws, you need to implement them and you need to enforce them. Our enforcement is a critical piece of the work of EPA. Not only does it ensure that polluters pay, but ensures that there's a level playing field for businesses, and it needs to continue and be strong. Just look at what we did last year. Just mentioned two cases, Anadarko and Hyundai Kia. Those were efforts that not only ensured that the polluters paid, but it provided resources for us to do our job. And the great thing about our enforcement today is they're pushing the entire agency to think about the technologies of the future, to think about how we do our business so we can keep adapting to changing times, different sources, and continue to be effective and efficient in the work that we do. Lots of things are going on in chemical safety that are exciting, and we're gonna continue that work. First, for the first time in 30 years, we're doing risk assessments on chemicals that are in broad use today, just to make sure that we have the protections in place that people need. 
We're also moving forward with a worker protection standard. We proposed it, it's gonna be finalized this year to ensure that farm workers have the same protections that others have been enjoying. And we're also bringing consumers into the mix. We're providing logos that will allow consumers to make safer choices themselves and to send signals to the market that health and safety is important. Science is the heart and soul of what we do at EPA. It is our North Star. Scientists tell us not just what the problems of today are, but they envision and look for the problems of the future and help us design those solutions that we can bring to the table so that we protect public health and the environment. EPA is essentially a science entity and one that is respected not just in the U.S., but respected internationally. We are a leader. We will not give that up. Science, the law, and transparency is what we are all about. EPA has had a great year, and I really expect that next year is going to be even better. We're a strong agency. We are one EPA. We know the American people care about public health and the environment, and we are gonna to continue to deliver for them. And it's all because of the work you do. Thank you, each and every one of you.